This week's podcast is sponsored by the Bowers & Wilkins 600 Series 3. The eighth generation of one of Hi-Fi's most acclaimed ranges features some of the most comprehensive upgrades the 600 Series has ever received. The Bowers & Wilkins 600 Series 3 is designed for every music lover. It's the attainable way to experience the joys of true sound at home. Discover more at BowersWilkins.com. Hello and welcome to the AV Forums Movies Podcast for Monday the 4th of December 2023, last one of the year. Tonight I'm joined by Simon Crust. Good evening, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. And Mark Costello. Merry New Year! I don't know why you're doing this, guys? We're going to be back like like in, in a yeah, I don't yeah, know, like well, 10, yeah, 10 yeah, days to yeah, do but it. We have to share that. We have to share it with them lot. This is, this is the last one of just us fair enough okay yeah. well we're gonna close out the year with a look at what to look forward to in 2024 the films were, were pushed back from 2023 so really we were looking forward to them a long time ago <laughs> the films that we likely won't see until 2025 and what the most anticipated films of next year will be dun 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 but before all that, let's give is, some people is it some not free all spoilers. Stuff. No, it is. It is all spoilers. But we're just going to okay. read the names out and then go home. Okay. Wait, we're already home. We're already... Um, let's do some competitions, Mark. Go. Uh, okay. So, uh, just an awesome array of packages here. Let's start off with the biggies. Uh, you can win the incredible uh, Bowser and Wilkins Seven Hundred Five S Three and Audio Quest Rocket Twenty Two. Uh, set worth over three grand, courtesy of the good folks over at Peter Tyson. Uh, you can also win the ultimate streaming system worth 2,400 quid from Roxanne and Monitor Audio. It keeps coming. There's more. Uh, win a pair of Astle & Kern UW100 Mark II true wireless earphones from AV.com. You can also win a Humax A1 4K Ultra HD streaming box and three Humax Wi-Fi smart plugs uh, in a ultimate Humax bundle and exclusively open to our US members. There's a $500 voucher from MPB up for grabs. If you like your competitions a little on the smaller side, you uh, we've got you covered as well. Uh, and exclusive offers for patrons include Past Lives on Blu-ray. I watched that on the weekend, and it is easily the film of the year. Everyone it's getting aces, that one. isn't it? Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles: Mutant Mayhem on 4K, as is Oppenheimer. Plus, there are loads of sets for Christmas, including Radiance Films' limited edition box set World Noir Volume One on Blu-ray, a Christmas TV box set from Acorn Media, and another Second Sight bundle, this time with Crimes of the Future, Martin, and It Follows, all on Blu-ray. But it seems to be that this time of year, there's always an extra little bonus gift ready, snuggled at the bottom of the AV forum stocking, and it's yet another glorious James Bond 007 scale electric set. Where do we keep getting them from? That's brilliant, and I haven't won one yet. Plus, AVF's own Christmas giveaways. One has been set up for patrons and one has been set up specifically for international patrons only because they rarely get to enter any of the competitions due to limitations stipulated by our sponsors. So get entering. Head over to avforums.com forward slash competitions to enter and all competitions are open to eligible AV Forums members resident in the UK. <sighs> Boom. Very nice. Very nice prizes. Excellent um, prizes. Mm. And we've already had a bunch of winners. Uh, supporter Another Plane won Transformers Rise of the Beasts on 4K. Supporter R-Type won Mortal Kombat Leg Legends Cage Match on Blu-ray. Togusa won Interview of the Vampire Season 1 on Blu-ray. Featherall won Delicatessen on 4K. Thing WNN won Chopper on Limited Edition Blu-ray. JGM won Halloween Witch and Texas Chainsaw Massacre 4K from Second Sight. And star supporters George L seventy eight won uh, Ginger Snaps trilogy on Blu ray, V Dub won Santa Claus on four K, and star supporter Mikey Cubed won the thirty film four K collection oh, from Warner. Nice. Well, well done, everyone. I was seriously bricking that one. That was in the post. I was like, "Have you got it yet? Have you got it yet?" <laughs> <laughs> very nice it's right. all right if you checked ebay he's probably told you it hasn't and it's already on there <laughs> disc by mike. disc yeah exactly we, we've got you sorted mikey cube we're watching you 
<laughs> so, so we put together this list of what to look forward to in 2024. And the funny thing about this is that we haven't done a list like this since 21, when we did it for 22. Mm. And I looked back over the 22 list written in 2021, and like five of the titles from this 2024 list are in it. No. <laughs> yeah. And it was, and it, I was looking at the list thinking, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, we yeah. still haven't got these things we've been <laughs> looking forward to for like two years. Uh, what that makes me think is that we're going to give you this list and loads of them aren't going to come out this year. They get, I mean, there's a whole bunch of them that are in uh, Q4, uh, things like Joker 2, Gladiator 2, the animated Lord of the Rings, Havoc, Nosferatu. They're all Q4. The reality is they're going to get bumped. We're putting them in the list anyway because they've been getting dates, but it's it's super optimistic. It's really only the ones in January and February that that are guaranteed <laughs> that, to come that's out. It. <laughs> After that, anything's going <laughs> to happen. Yeah. Oh. Um, I think it, it's been an interesting time because you know people people looked at the strike as being the death of twenty four in terms of movies, um, but studios wisely in some respects like deferred a lot of their titles annoyingly in many respects because i'm sure all of us i mean judging by the way this ranking goes would have seen june 2 like mm -hmm. right about now mm -hmm. so uh so it's a bit of a shame and it's left really weird things going on like for example closing out the year with aquaman 2 which you know i mean the first one was like a billion dollar blockbuster and then this one yeah okay well speak for yourself cast some of us are closing out the year with godzilla minus one so you know <laughs> you're yeah, saying yeah but that's that just speaks to how this goes people are closing out the year with godzilla minus one they're not closing out the year with aquaman two or well, you are you are you're, you're uh, yeah yeah you're, you're gonna go and see it yeah yeah you're gonna go and see it and love it <laughs> yeah <laughs> but only it's... only if it's got the bongo and drum playing octopus in otherwise yeah. three out of ten i'm calling that's... it now and it's hard with all of this. It's hard to predict because last year, I, you know, it would have been after the you know, craziness of Maverick. Everyone was guaranteeing Dead Reckoning would be a surefire bet. And Barbenheimer came along. <laughs> so it's really hard to see from this list. So we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to look at the ones where, that didn't make the list. We're going to look at the ones that we're really dreading. And we're going to maybe try and pick out what we think the Barbenheimer of 24 will be. And then we're going to close out by, obviously, our favourite titles. But the list will be published towards the end of the year, probably go into early access for patrons before that. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting looking ahead and seeing seeing particularly retrospectively, looking at that 22 list, seeing our scores was... Uh, was interesting. So we the whole team has scored these movies and we've given them an average of all our scores, but there are some interesting results. <laughs> and, and, and do you know what the overarching theme of all that is, Kaz? Yeah, we know nothing. <laughs> yeah, it's don't the royal, trust royal us. We, don't then. listen to us. We literally looking at those scores from 21, we didn't have a clue. We to, Go no. and read other websites instead. They they most know better than us. Honestly. I gave Maverick an eleven. <laughs> Well, right, that was the one you got right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 honestly, if anybody does want a giggle, go back onto the site and dig and out. Find it, yeah. Find out that the, the oh, list we, we put got together stuff so <laughs> wrong. <laughs> that was it. Was an it was an interesting list of what we just gave that what. <laughs> but hey, let's do it all again now, shall yeah. we? We'll get it right this time. Oh yeah. So, right. so amongst the ones that we uh, we considered. Uh, but they didn't make the cut uh, because we don't think we'll they'll come out in 24. They haven't been given dates and they would have made the list. So Tarantino's latest. We've been looking forward to it for a while. I don't know whether it'll be his last, but that's what he keeps saying about every last movie he does. Um, so the movie critic looks tremendous, would have made our list, probably would have made our top 10, not been dated, probably won't come out. I was going to say... Have you seen anything about production? No. I, I, no. Do we do we even know if this has gone before cameras? Because I have seen nothing in the press that this has even started shooting. I'm not. It, it might have no. done. 
but no, I've but, just seen nothing. But it's also not likely to be like an effects heavy, post production heavy movie. So it's the kind of thing which, if they wanted this in twenty four, they could shoot it now and then release it at the end of the year. You know, like it's not, True. it's it doesn't need the same. It's a bit like uh, coming on to Eastwood's last movie, The Jura Two. I mean, that's the kind of thing he's known for shooting quickly, doing it efficiently and turning it around. And again, not effects heavy, doesn't need to sit in the in the in the in the room for three years before it finally gets released. No, that's true. But I think one of the things we've learned from this year is it isn't about when a film's ready. Yes. It's about when the studio when the wants ready, to yeah. release it or is able to release it yeah yeah and i, and I mean so, I, yeah. yeah i agree although that is also its own stupidity because imagine <laughs> if they had released june 2 now or well, i mean everyone would just be seeing june 2 what what are the other choices so it, it seems like some of these studio choices are interesting anyway we discounted tarantino's la- latest because not dated we discounted eastwood's jura 2 uh i don't know whether it would have made the Top 20. Eastwood is a legend. I'm not entirely sure. The mule. Yeah, I'm not entirely Just sure. Stay in. I'm not entirely sure I would have done anything other than consider it as a sort of a tribute to his work. Yes. Um, but I'm hoping it'll be good. The uh, laptop achievement nod. Yes, exactly. <laughs> more interested in Apex. Oh yeah. Uh, I oh, am. yeah. I am because <sighs> I, I would have been more interested in it if they'd stuck Cruise in it and had the tagline doing for racing cars what Top Gun Maverick did for fighter planes. But what, you, mean, they... you mean Cole Trickle coming back? Yes. Oh, man, I don't watch that. Yes, exactly. I don't watch that. Yeah, we would have all been there for, you know, <gasps> more Days of Thunder. Nicole Kidman in the Val Kilmer role. I'm just saying, make it happen. <laughs> oh, God, take they all my money, Hollywood. They could have easily had it. Days of lightning. Oh. Days of lightning. Days of go. thunder and light. No, that's just silly. <laughs> that's just silly. Anyway, that's not happening. Days so... of thunder maverick. <laughs> Instead, we're going to get Apex. Again, no. not dated. Not sure it's finished. These are the kinds of things that we would have put in. The things that we considered but didn't make the cuts are... And then, and no, it disappoints you, Mark. So you can big it up all you want. And I am looking forward to it. Jason Statham and Flaming Honey. I, I mean, what, what is it with him and animals? It's like I've had a couple of films with massive, great big sharks. Now I'm going to have a film with very small, tiny insects. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's Statham. It looks ace. It does look ace. But I'm not going to IMAX to see it. And it's out in IMAX. Out in IMAX, giant bees. It's giant it's... bees. Well, I mean, well, they will they be will in be IMAX. IMAX. Oh, no. hey! <laughs> okay. Also, also, I've got no time for David Ayer. I have no idea what his next movie will be like. But I, and I, every time he does one, I'm like, oh, this could be like a, a hit for Arnie, like a gritty hit for Arnie. We could. Mm. Oh, oh, come on, Sabotage! I thought Sabotage was pretty, pretty decent. I enjoyed Sabotage, but... Hmm. It's better, <laughs> anyway. it better than The Last Stand, just saying that. Yeah, but that's not hard. Anyway, sticking to um, next year. <laughs> yeah, so we also dropped Doug Lyman's Roadhouse remake, <sighs> which, which is really weird because it also got dropped from cinemas, didn't it? Because Amazon Prime Video, who, who, uh, who, who made it, said no to Jake Gyllenhaal and Doug Lyman about a theatrical release. They were like, no. <laughs> uh, do, do you know what? I'm, I'm all for crazy reinventions of 80s properties. But, but this, makes, this makes my skin crawl. I'm oh, sorry. Man. He's oh, wow. he's not now the greatest bouncer in the whole of you know the Midwest. He's UFC. now a UFC, UFC. fighter. Yeah. What? <laughs> Just have a window. He needs to be a Zen bouncer. You can't have anything other than a Zen bouncer. Bring out, bring Sam Elliott back. You know, I tell it's... you what, watching this, I can tell you one thing: pain will hurt. It <laughs> bloody well will hurt watching this. Oh, I can't know. I'm, I'm. This, this is the one that scares me for next year. You're actually going to enjoy it. This is the terrifying oh, well, thing I about hope this conversation. So. I'm just, I'm listening to it, and I'm seeing you loving it. 
Well, I, um, I want to love it. Yeah. So that's coming. Well. It's coming straight to Amazon. Uh, we're getting a. I, 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 I'm calling it a recall. Is it a recall? Legacy sequel? I don't know what it is. Twisters. Another Twisters. Yeah. Another um, more Twister. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Twisters. That was a long time um, ago. We're getting a prequel to Quiet Place. Quiet Place Day One. Uh-uh. Didn't we, we have that? that? What, what, yeah, that wasn't, that, wasn't that the first ten minutes of the of the Quiet Place film. Part Two? Yeah, yeah I, I mean, yeah. Uh, more Transformers. Oh dear. No. Yeah. See, this is the reaction. But you see, when I say more Lord of the Rings, everyone gets really uh, a little bit more positive about it, which yeah. we'll come to later. But it, it's because Lord of the Rings is animated, and this is Transformers is animated, set on Cybertron. I mean, it could be. Could be good. Let's could let's have a look Netflix though. The series key. was pretty good, wasn't it? The well, Transformers yeah. Netflix. It was. Yeah. But let's have a look at the track record. No, no, right. no. How about yeah, the yes. animated track yes. record? Oh, oh. Yeah. All right, animated oh. track record. Yes. Right. Yeah. Lots of crap Transformers. No yeah. crap animated Lord of the Rings. Just saying. <laughs> okay. I'm just saying. Yeah. Look, it's 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 maths, people. It's maths. Well. <laughs> I, I, it wouldn't make our list, but I kind of would like the animated Transformers to do better than the live action ones because I want them to stop making them. Well, mm. yes, well, I think we're all with you there. Whereas if they animated one does badly, they'll go, Well, we won't do animated anymore. We'll go back to live action and bring Anthony Hopkins back and some <laughs> and Merlin. Oh, more um, Merlin. Yes, please. A fourth Bad Boys movie. I, I like the Bad Boys movies. I'm the I guy do. saying I like the Bad no, Boys movies. No, I, I do. I thought the last one was good fun. Yeah. Much better than it had any right to be. So that's why yes. lightning cannot strike twice. Why not? It oh. can't. It, it doesn't, Kaz. It's <laughs> science. I mean, it, it does. But anyway. Um, Eli Roth doing a movie almost will never get me interested. But Mark sent me an image from the new Borderlands movie. Didn't involve cannibals. Looked quite interesting. Future tech. Well, it, it's. I mean, the, the the video game is is good fun, but it's the cat. I mean, he's got Kate Blanchett in it. How, how do you, how do you manage that? I mean, so yeah. the must probably be... didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Stand oh, in front of the screen oh. and wield yeah. a sword and have green the, eyes. They the, the, the probably told her come, come, was, come in for um, come in for some ADR Western, on tar. That's it. You just just redo these few lines of tar, Kate. <laughs> I thought Borderlands was um, sort of it Western. Is. I, Western-y. I was, it's, it I was it is. It's by a, some a of Western-y other sci-fi. Green screen work. Um, Wicked? Mm. No. Well, that might be quite I, good. I really yeah, thought they'd show. Yeah, I, I if thought they, if they do it right. Good. Is that musical? Yeah, it is. See, look, I love Maleficent, and I've always wanted them to do Wicked as a movie, Maleficent style. Hmm. But just... It's a musical, so it's it's got to be a musical. Oh Jesus! I'm not. Yeah. I'm not disputing that. That musical. really won't work. I'm I mean, that's, to... there's a terrible, terrible track record of of trying, musicals yeah, being I'm made into films and just being awful. I want Maleficent rather than all these direct retreads. I want them to do a Maleficent like they did for Wicked. I don't, I'm just not sold on the musical aspect. If yeah, it's a yeah, good yeah. Port, it might not. Anyway, let's see. Madam Web, I was not on board for this. The trailer looks vaguely interesting, but it's definitely a TV job. It uh, just doesn't. Yeah. It's not crying for me to go and go and see it at the cinema at all. It you know what I will? Like... Do you know what I will say for it? It doesn't look as bad as Craven. <laughs> Well, I wasn't Just even going to mention Craven. Well, I know how bad that was. I know, <laughs> but, but therefore, therefore, what, I news think... round. What's on the news <laughs> round? <laughs> Ask your parents, kids. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh, there, there were a couple of releases that I did feel bad about missing. One of them in particular was Poor Things. This is uh, Yorgos Lanthimos's latest. Looks and... nuts. And no. it does look nuts. I mean, you look at the poster, and uh, like, yeah, you look at the poster, and that will tell you all you need to know about whether or not you're going to watch this movie. Yeah. But, but I mean, um, it, it was on our 22 list written in 2021. So, and it's, 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 it's out now, like I think this month. So I just couldn't bring myself to put it 
even though it's not out until the first few days of January in the UK, I just couldn't bring myself to put it on another list. Yeah. Um, but ironically, Glazer's Zone of Interest did get a spot, although that is coming out in the US in a few days' time. Mm. Uh, so tell me, what are the things that you are absolutely dreading? One each. Can you do one each? Have you got one? Mm. Yep. What you're absolutely dreading, it can be from the 20 we've done. You don't have to betray us having done the list. Hmm? Mark, uh, go. I'll go. Uh, Joker, folie a deux. Mm, I, knew was... I hated the first Joker film. Hated it. And the left turn into Lady Gaga-esque musical territory slightly intrigues me, but <laughs> just not enough to just give a crap. No, I'm not. I'm not interested in this one bit. I can mm. see that. I mean, Joker was not your favorite film. It's an acquired taste. Yeah, it is an acquired taste. Whereas I loved it. I think that they didn't need to make a sequel. No. But I do think that it's a gamble they've done. Making a sequel, making it a, a psychological thriller musical, which is absurd and casting Lady Gaga, all of which is a gamble which could absolutely end in the four that like Tom has guessed it's going to be. Or <laughs> it could turn out to be surprise genius. And no one expected. Joker was kind of a little bit like the Barbenheimer of its year. A little bit. It, no one expected that. No one expected well. that. That's true. You know, it's like an R-rated, serious DC movie, Whack and Phoenix no one expected it to do well. It did blisteringly well and earned like Oscars. What? <laughs> so, so I, I kind of left field think that this, the coin could still fall the other way. Is all I'm saying. I agree with you, Mark. It's crazy ideas. It just, uh, I, I, I kind of see why it needed crazy ideas uh, rather than just a sequel. No, no, no I, I agree. And, and believe me, I'd rather have a crazy idea than more of the, the crap that was the first film. But I think. I mean, Gagara, I don't have a problem with, but Gagara's Harley Gagar. Quinn after <laughs> Margot Robbie, which is, she just seems so indelibly linked to that role now. I just... I can't see Margot Robbie in this universe, though. Oh, no, no, no. I, I love no, her, but... No, 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 it won't, but but it it just feels like it's, it's one of I these... Know. But, I don't but know. But look, Heath Ledger yeah. was Joker for a long time after his, you know... Still is. Particularly, <laughs> yes. Still is. <laughs> you see what I mean? But Joaquin <laughs> Phoenix came in and rendered his own Joker. So, I, and I think that Gaga, 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 has, Gaga. Uh, has Gaga. done has done pretty well considering she's you know it's, I don't, she's just I don't, a singer. It, it's not yeah. Gaga. It's it, it it's 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 Gaga. That. It's the, the oh no. Yeah, so, I get it. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, we'll see. Is the answer yes. to that? That's your one for the That's one. That's my one. Gonna go badly go on Sai. what's yours uh i don't really uh, rate the uh, alien will be any good just uh, based on the track record of things that's going on there uh, alien romulus oh. yes i just think <sighs> leave it alone uh, leave it alone. alone it is it is tough to get up uh a lot of enthusiasm for another alien film after being pounded so many times i mean you can say that scott's not involved you could say that it's not set in the David timeline. <laughs> I mean, these are positives not enough, here. Not enough yeah. fingering for me. Three out of ten. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the trouble is it has been done to death. I, I, I have to say I've got more hopes for um, Noah Hawley, who's the guy behind, like, Fargo and Legion yeah. and doing a TV show. His TV show won't drop till 25, but I've got more hopes for that than this. Plus, it's got Timothy Oliphant in it, which, as we know, is you know, is yeah, it's... is a sign of all good things. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so I can see why you're hesitant about this. Uh, yes. So I would say that my entry that I'm worried about is Deadpool three. And I know it's controversial, and I should love it because I love Deadpool 1, and I'm a huge apologist for Deadpool 2. I had a lot of fun with it. I know there are people who really went, it's not as good. I secretly thought it was pretty much as good. <laughs> um, uh, so I had a lot of fun with both Deadpool movies. I also love the hell out of Hugh Jackman's Wolverine. 
Mm. And he had a tremendous run. And I secretly like The Wolverine, particularly the extended cut of that. So there's a lot of apologies for these characters going on with me. And putting them both together in a movie is absolutely for me. This Marvel's in an odd place, though. And, and a, a part of my brain is going, they're really scrambling. They're really like, what can we do to course correct? They've announced that this film, this Deadpool film, not any of the others, is, is part of the the Marvel phases. So this film will be part of, part of phase, phase five. Warning bells. I'm, I've got <laughs> warning bells here. It's directed by the guy who did Free Guy and Adam Project. I like Ryan Reynolds and I like Free Guy and Adam Project, but I don't love them. They're not like, they're not movies which I would go, wow, this is going to course correct Marvel and be a great third entry in the Deadpool universe. I mean, there's lots going on here that I feel like is a bit of a, a scramble to fix stuff. I just wanted a decent Deadpool 3. Mm. And and I'm a bit worried, to be fair. After Logan, Logan was good nice. enough for me with yeah. uh, Hugh Jackman. Keeping on bringing him back just makes me think that they just can't create any good new characters. No, I think from, from, from what I've read about the plot of this, I think it, apparently it is going to end up taking the piss out of the multiverse that is its raison d'etre which is why instead of if it was a grand you know if it was a serious cornerstone of the mcu you'd you'd see him bringing in the fantastic four what you wouldn't see is him bringing in electra for god's sake which yes. is what he is so i am confident that that the tongue will remain firmly in the cheek i'm sure there will be the re requisite nods to secret wars or whatever it's, it's going to be setting up but i am i am confident with reynolds and jackman who who are both you know really uh, protective of those characters i don't think they'd be coming back even with you know if, if a huge truck of cash just got dumped outside so. yeah. their I mean, their yeah. their abodes i i think they they've got something here and i am um, i understand the reticence but i'm confident this is going to be excellent i still slung a seven in its direction so i'm not mm. writing it off i'm out of all the films though it, it is the one that i most hope will do well that i most fear won't Whereas something like mm. Alien, I can totally see where size si is coming from. And I've, I've got no, I'm not, I'm just not, I'm not sitting there going, yeah, oh. not invested in it enough yeah, to care. Whereas Deadpool 3, all of a sudden, by bringing it into the Marvel phases, they're like hinging Marvel on Deadpool 3 as well. I just wanted to. I don't, I don't, but I don't 3. think they are. I, th I think it was inevitable that De Deadpool 3, that Deadpool was going to crop up in the MCU. It was, it, it, we knew he was coming. Yeah, and, but the and only I, Marvel film in 2024. Well, that's because it, that's because it's the only thing that was bloody ready to go. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, let's be honest. No uh, pressure. No pressure. No. That's true. Well, there, there was that comic that he did, um, Deadpool Kills the MCU or something, when he went around and destroyed the whole lot. Maybe I think at one that. stage That's or what another, happen. one <laughs> stage or another, almost all of the characters in Marvel have killed all of the others. Because I, there's a Punisher one. There's Punisher versus the MCU. There's yeah, I think they. I'm sure Blade did it once. I would have liked to have seen Blade do it. They should do that movie. Where is that movie, by the way? Let's not talk about that. Um, right. I'll tell you what. Sorry, I reckon Mahershala Ali's cropping up in Deadpool three. I reckon that's how they're gonna feed it into base whatever it is okay well they whatever. can they still won't release blade until 27 <gasps> it'll be like what, what what if it's not mahershala Ali? what if it's wesley snipes oh my god i'm so excited that oh my god i'm gonna fall i need to sit down i would be very <laughs> very very impressed if they brought wesley snipes <gasps> and blade for this deadpool i would have a lot of time <gasps> but but there is there is a bit of repetition like a going now. on there doesn't he look like what a weeble now <laughs> No, Weebles wibble, still, but they don't fall down, Sai. You should know can that. Still pull it off. Okay. <laughs> um, right. So our Barbenheimer of twenty-four. You can couple a couple of movies together. Oh, It'll never happen. Uh, or you could pick, just pick no. one that you think left field is going to do well. <sighs> All right. I just, doesn't have to be on the list. No, no, no. Well, I, uh, things I only know twenty films that are being released next year. It's, yeah, it's, it's the list you sent me. Yeah, exactly. It's all all the homework I could not do. 
Kaz. Uh, but the the one that I think is going to surprise everyone is Matthew Vaughan's Argyle. Because I think it looks utterly insane. But in that deranged, cutesy, what the fudge is happening kind of way, that in a way you had that same kind of gut feeling to Barbie. You know, Barbie movie, what on earth is that going to all be about? And then you saw the trailer and it was this meta, crazy, whatever. And here comes mm. our guy. You know, a suave super spy, Henry Cavill, great casting, great hair. Oh, no, 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 he doesn't exist. He's in a book. But hang on, the book is now real and the author's... Cr- For me, I think the trailer looked a huge amount of fun. It's got that crazy Matthew Vaughan energy to it that he brought to Kingsman but now it looks like he is broadening the palette with this I am all here for it and I think I, this, I hope so I think this is going to make four billion dollars next year I'm just going to come straight out and say it four billion for Argyle <laughs> forget the fact it's going straight to Apple it's not the point <laughs> <laughs> four I, billion I hope so I would say Apple didn't do too well with their last like actiony outing with Ghosted I would uh, I would like for them to be better at action. So I hope so. And I like Vaughan and I like the Cavill. So boom. My left field choice. Oh, sorry, sorry, your left field choice. Go. Oh, I haven't got one. You have to pick one. Pick, go, pick the dinosaurs pick running. Uh, what? Dinosaurs running? Is that on here? Yeah, Godzilla versus Kong. Haven't you seen the trailer? They no, won. No, my, my only they my only homework won. for this was the title and uh, who was directing and who was starring. I've done no, nothing other than that, um, which is why my scores for last time were as bad as they were. Um, <laughs> You're probably the nearest out of all of us. Si. <laughs> oh, my God. I've put um, so much I'm, effort into this. <laughs> yeah. My, instead of versus Kong, yeah. I mean, I've, I've, so I'm looking at my score here now. And I'm thinking I was probably too generous, drunk, because um, I was basing my uh, my decision on uh, the previous films, which I had great fun with, particularly the last one. Yeah, it's um, the same which was, director, which was you know I really enjoyed that. It was a superb disc. Um, yeah, I had a great great time with it. Um, so that was where my score came from. Um, and you're taking it back. Oh my god, you were the highest out of all of us for yeah, Godzilla. He was, yeah, yeah. Wow. But then, you know, again, it's based on pre preconception of what it could be. I, I mean, to be fair, I think the whole film is ruined because of minus one. It, it's just difficult it be, yeah. to take that kind of... I don't yeah. know whether that's... I, um, I see what you're saying, but I think there's room for both types. Yeah, I mean, they're very, very different films. Yeah, exactly. They? You want to go and see minus one. You want to go and see, like, Godzilla, but it's a very... It's a disaster movie. Yeah. You want to see Godzilla X Kong. You, you want to see a proper old school dress up in suits and do drunken boxing movie. I mean, it's it's. There's nothing serious about the craziness of of Wingard's Godzilla. It never, never even True. tries to instill scariness in you. So. True, but I, but I just I I mean I mean the thing is the monarch seems to have got the characters. The, 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 no, no, I think it got it's got the tone just about right. I think because it's it's dialed yeah. back some of the ridiculousness of of the the monsterverse films, yeah. and it, and it seems to have hit that sweet spot of. Decent character work, semi-serious. Oh, but look, here's some crazy CGI stuff. Just you know, way you know, remember as we're watching monster things. But it wouldn't work as a movie. Well, 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 so I feel like they've made Monarch knowing. I mean, because Wingard said in an interview, he said he kind of liked to have less humans, and and (laughs) I love that idea. So Monarch can be where all the humans mm. like wander around and then there's like God's relationship of worries goes over no, the all top that. of the, yeah, yeah. yeah, and like a bus collapses or yeah. something and they can cry about it. And <laughs> and in, in Godzilla versus Kong, they're they're doing the proper oh. old chewits eating the bus. We're yeah, seeing them nice. eating the bus, not the people crying over who was in the bus. I just don't think it's going to be as tasty as Barrow in Furnace Bus Depot. Can I? <laughs> I just don't. I'm uh... ask you ask your parents, kids, about the Chew It's yeah. advert. It's, it's an <laughs> ask your parents kind of episode, <laughs> isn't it? Really? Oh, our references are so up to date. We're so I mean, hip and happening. If I'm picking the Barbenheimer, it should really be Joker. But we talked about it so much, I'm going to go way out of my comfort zone, and I'm going to suggest the Fall Guy. 
It doesn't make mm. any sense as the oh, Barbenheimer no. of next year. No, of course it's, it doesn't. It's uh, by David Lynch, who did um, John Wick, the first John Wick, Hobbs and Shaw. Mm. Oh, shit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> bu- and Bullet Train, which I had a lot of fun with. Mm. But mm-hmm. what I'm paying attention to, and it's got it's got Emily Blunt in it, but, you know, she was on Jungle Cruise as well. Um, what I'm paying attention to is Ryan Gosling. What, um, what if he is Ken? What if this is the sequel, Barbie <laughs> sequel, and no, this is Ken in the real world? It's oh my God. To be, yeah, like a, a kind of an action comedy. That 13 and a half out of 10. 80s style. Um, I, I've got a lot of time for Ryan Gosling. Uh, mm. I, I, think, I think it could prove kind of the kind of thing we want. Anyway. Is this, I, I mean, clear, is this based on the TV show, is it? Though? Yeah. No, no it is. 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 It, it, have you read the story? Of course I'm, right. I'm sorry. Is he called Colt Seavers? It doesn't matter. That no, he's can't, 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 you, you can't he's just say. A, he's an aging stuntman who does stunts for like big Hollywood stars. And he gets approached because someone's gone missing. And so he has to go and investigate them. He's a stuntman. Why is, uh, why a is stunt he going? Man, he, ex-stuntman who's a... a uh... Because he is the unknown thing, stuntman who made Eastwood such a star. Yeah, but so. it's absolutely Lee Majors going down to solve some kind of crime, investigate something. That's... Are you are you seriously comparing Rand Gosling to the mighty Lee Majors? <laughs> no, you are. Are you to say, seriously is it based doing that? on <laughs> the TV series? And I'm saying it is based on the TV series. Well, and now you're now you're trying to compare Lee Majors, who I think has special powers, to a mere <laughs> to a mere mortal. Yeah, he's got bionic legs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think once I could see through his eye. <laughs> <laughs> well. Ask your parents kids about toys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those were the things that we got for Christmas before God invented games consoles, people. Oh, my God. And it was good. <laughs> I had the table, too. I don't think it did anything. I think... Anyway. Um, oh, my God. We're so rubbish. That's fantastic. <laughs> so, I think... I mean, we've, we've covered... We've covered uh, the Barbenheimers. We've covered the ones we're not looking forward to. Um, but taking it through the list... Like in quick order, we can do some shout outs along the way. We've done Joker, mm. Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire. Mark, Rubbish. you're looking forward to this? Uh, I, I am, but even, uh, even even I don't think it's going to be as good as Afterlife. And I loved Afterlife. So, no. Interesting. I've got hopes for this. Mm. You, it's uh, not gonna... uh, oh, yeah. See, that's a it... nice low score. That's going to be terrible. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the tr- I mean, I know that I know Afterlife ended in in the cameo reunion of all cameo reunions, uh, but I think they're trying too hard with this, bringing it back to New York. You know, I just I just it's think they're, be they're forcing just, this. Uh, the, 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 just the pitch on in front of IMDb. You look at that and go, oh God, no. <laughs> <laughs> nice, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Hit me. Yeah, I don't care. Why not? I don't, I don't care about it. The, the the last three we had a kind of link because of the good, you know, the 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 strong start, the link back to to its origins, Oz, you know, and all that. And I think this one it just means nothing. To, I saw the trailer and I'm just like, yeah. I I don't care. I'm a bit it's, apathetic. About it's a chance that. to go in the new direction, surely, isn't it? Because it's, it's <laughs> well, now and now. And what's the new di- of, what's the new the direction? But well, what's well, the new direction? Be, there's going to be uh, a bionic ape. <laughs> and he's we'll going to fight a giant lizard. He's going to fight a giant and a normal lizard. ape. <laughs> and Lee Majors has been tasked with finding him. <laughs> night Night what, Swim. What do we think about Night Swim? Uh, it it it's got a decent trailer, but we've seen too many of these Blumhouse films with decent premises turn into just bland, yeah, average films. So, could be good, could be poop. I want Wyatt Russell to have a real career resurgence, whatever, or a career. No, <laughs> no, no. Why, they, they should go back and put Wyatt Russell in every single Kurt Russell film, playing a young version of him in everything because he's ace. What? Just make sequels or prequels, or what, no, you just no, want him no, in everything? No, no. CG. Go back. John Carpenter. He's doing nothing. Go back and CGI insert him into the thing in a flashback. I'd do that. I'd watch that. 
<laughs> Honestly, yes. young young Wyatt Russell. Well, no, Wyatt Russell's young Kurt Russell in everything. And for that, I'm going to skip right past Argyle because you've already talked about it, and mm-hmm. Alien Romulus because we already mm-hmm. talked about it. And I'm going to go to Gladiator Two, which was nearly my most dreaded of the list. Nearly, I think it'll be good, but I also a part of me is like, why? Why There's another so another so many pointless. whys about this? Yeah. And uh, the star, Paul Mescal was tremendous in uh, Normal People. He was tremendous in After Sun, but I've seen him in a lot of dross afterwards, and I'm just not sure I'm ready for another Gladiator movie. Him in the lead, Ridley Scott having loads of people. I, I don't know. I don't know enough about it, but... The, the, sto- the story's got to be crucial to this, because it... And it's, it's so indelibly it? it's, it's so indelibly linked. But, so, but isn't and, and isn't that just oh, it's, it just feels so lazy, doesn't it? It's it's going back to the days of cheap VHS sequels where it was the son of the yeah. hero of the yeah. last one. Yeah. Son of Gladiator. Oh, I think this I mean <laughs> the thing the is though killed. No, this is Connie Nielsen's son. Yeah, it's got Connie Nielsen coming back in it. Yeah, so it's not yeah. it's not it's not uh Russell Crowe's son. No. It's, uh, it's done with, yeah. yeah. But you know he's got Denzel Washington and Pedro Pascal, so who knows? I, yeah, I, I need exactly. I need to see a story synopsis before I get either excited yeah. or worried about. You this. know the story so- synopsis I was excited about was Russell Crowe battling <laughs> like demons in, in the Hades. underworld. Yes, yeah, that's that's the, that's the Gladiator yeah. too. I'd have been there for that. They should have done it. I can't believe that they they balked it and they went, no, no, let's do this very serious follow up and uh, yeah, let's, let's get some locations in Morocco. Yes, <laughs> I mean, I just, I just, <laughs> people would have been all over that. Absolutely. Uh, Lord of the Rings animated. Again, it could could be brilliant. I I don't even know which which part of the the entire world story. That we're even looking at here, so it's made up, isn't it? Yeah, it's made no, up, made no, up. World. It's not based on any writings, as far as I know. It's just early stuff. Mm. Could be good. Might be all right. Might be all right. Again, uh, you know, we're kind of jaded by the Hobbit and the Rings thing. Yes, we've the done Amazon Rings thing. We've done Fall Guy. We've done Godzilla versus Kong. Uh, number ten is is entirely me. It's super niche. I couldn't couldn't oh right yeah i couldn't sell mark on it at all he he gave me a, a spread of scores just to annoy me he was like did it work seven could be a six <laughs> could be a five could be a four which one did you uh, pick yeah i picked a five because i didn't want to be prejudiced by the fact that i want it to be amazing because a part of me is a little bit worried it, it's takashi Kitano who nobody knows about but he's just one of the greatest japanese directors ever and um, he, he's he did his last three films were called uh, Outrage. He did an Outrage trilogy, and it was a perfect end to his career. But he's decided to come back in and do another movie based on a book he wrote, Kubi, uh, which means neck. And it's a historical movie, um, and it, you know it looks epic. But Kitano is known for his very offbeat sense of humor, and. By and large, he's made that work. I I can't tell enough from the trailer in this. He's done a lot of historical stuff, though, and they've all been pretty good. I mean, I remember the very first disc I ever reviewed for, must have been uh, Chris down at DVD Debate, was... um, That Archie. uh, Oh, Christ. That Archie, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, Oh, Christ, I can't remember now. The old brain's gone. Never mind. It was one of his. (laughs) Yeah. Well, he did that to Archie, though. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, that's, I mean, see, I think, I, I think if I'm honest, guys, you asked me after I just sat through two hours and 50 minutes of the fall of Eiko Castle, right. which is Kinji Fukasaku's read, classic feudal Japan full of samurai retainers, assassinations. And you send me this, and I'm just like, I've just seen this film. I'm still going to leave this Literally five in here so that at the end that's of fine. the year, I can point at you and go, and you go, ha, ha, ha. or, I can point to you and go, you were right, and be really annoyed. You genius, Mark. That's exactly right. Um, Driveway Dolls. Uh, Ethan Cohen. The Cohen brothers are split up. I mean, they split up. Like, they just well, got fed up with filmmaking. Or... <laughs> yeah. 
they got fed up with uh, filmmaking, apparently, a, a bit disheartened because it was a hard job. So Joel went and did Tragedy of Macbeth, which was highly acclaimed, and uh, Ethan's doing Driveway Dolls, uh, kind of a comedy caper thing. Um, I'm, I'm interested. It'd be interesting if the split of the means that Joel does serious stuff and Ethan does comedy, whereas the two together... The two kind together of have that scene. lovely um, balance, Blend. don't they? Yeah. The, 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 the trailer look. The trailer looks good, but it might just be the trailer. It feels like they're doubling down on the quirk on that one. So I yes. just hope they da- they dial it back a little bit. And yeah, yeah. But still, yeah, it looks it looks fun. It does look fun. Uh, Deadpool three. I, I I do want to be good. Um, let's see how that pans out. Havoc. There's no way it's going to be out before like 2030. Havoc <laughs> was shot in 2021. It made our list. Or 22, because it was shot and in the can in 2021. And the last update, I I, I have no idea what's going on with it, but the last update, this this is the guy who did the raid. He did the raid, he did the raid two, he did the apostle, he did Gangs of London, and he's got Tom Hardy to to beat up people and shoot people. And it looks like it could be great, proper, proper gritty John Wick style. But he had it in the can, and then his last tweet was like, "Oh yeah, I just need to film a few more scenes." Like two years later, what are you playing at? Like, <laughs> I just need to film a few more scenes means like a week after you finish the film. It doesn't mean two years later. So, so I've no idea whether maybe the ever... GGL got hold of him and said, "Here, yeah, this is crap. We need to it's do ne- something." It's with Netflix it. as well, so it's not like Netflix really have a a, a strict sort of regime when it comes to what cuts they release yeah. it they're uh, like we, we don't need an editor uh, just give, I mean, us, give us you know give us uh, it as is evans cropped up on the empire podcast a couple of weeks ago on a live panel and he was all relaxed about it and they were talking about it and he seemed you know really excited and it was uh, and, and he made it sound like this thing was imminent okay but but who the hell knows but it, it, it was probably just as imminent as it was back in 2021 <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's crazy. Uh, onto the one that you all love. I'm still a little hesitant about it. Uh, Nosferatu. Robert yeah, Eggers. Can't, can't wait. He's not. Eggers hasn't let me down yet. And Nosferatu, as the the good lord Mr. Crust himself said, is an absolute horror classic. Yeah. So this it did, just... but doesn't that make you more worried? No, though? I think no, because it's I, Eggers. I think he's polarizing. I can see he's he's done some very left field stuff, which doesn't work for everybody. I, you oh, know, I've loved some totally of the, his work, and I've scratched my head at the lighthouse. Well, it's, it's <laughs> my uh, it's, it's my all time favorite film. Um, I'm yeah, born. Uh, you still gave it an eight. Did you yeah, just think it was a re release of, the, of the twenty two film? Yeah. Yeah. Like, so, just looked at him and oh yeah, see um, the, the, everything you've said there. You know the name and the and the director. I thought, oh, well, that's going to be good. Yeah. Um, but now I'm thinking about it a bit more. Mm. Yeah, it is. You know, you know what made me bump it down a point was actually uh, the Idol HBO. Yeah, <laughs> Lily Rose. Show. Depp. Yeah, I don't <laughs> have any problem with Lily Rose Depp, but the Idol was terrible, <laughs> and she was in it, and she didn't come out all that well from it. Mm. And putting her front and center in this is immediately making me go, hmm, with a big hmm. No, I, I have I have faith in Eggers on this one, and I think this is going to be. Amazing. Yeah. Well, it's similar I feelings he was about in the remake, wasn't he? Yeah. It's a Def... Was he in the remake? Oh, yeah. He was. Double Nosferatu for Defy. Yeah. No, he wasn't in the remake. Maybe Shadow he was in Shadow of the Vampire. Oh, that's, that's what yeah. he was in. Um, Zone of Interest. Jonathan Glazer. Mm. Now, again, similar feelings. I don't know. I don't know why I put Open Range in here. That's a holdover. He did Under the Skin, mm-hmm. and. Uh, I like Under the Skin a lot, but again, polarizing, very hard to fully appreciate. This one is about um, a Nazi commandant who, and his life when he moves his family into a beautiful home right next to the concentration camp that he works at. <laughs> And he's got like his garden and his kids and his wife. And he's got like a normal family routine. And like across the fence, 
it's where he works. <laughs> Things aren't so good there. So um, so it'll be interesting to see uh, how this pans out. But mm. we have really cheated, including this. This was Tom's suggestion, and it's a big cheat. It's it's open to massive critical acclaim. It's not here it hasn't. In the US. Not, <laughs> oh, not here, so we know nothing. Exactly. <laughs> oh, come exactly. on. It's a big cheat. Big cheat. It's a big cheat. Cheat. <laughs> Cheat, cheat. Oh, Tush and Piffle, the pair of you. <laughs> why, why on earth would you not consider upping your score for Furiosa after seeing that trailer, Mark? My God. Our number four entry is <sighs> Furiosa, curiously subtitled A Mad Max Saga. Didn't need it, but anyway, mm. Furiosa. I, I, I mean, I'll be honest, the trailer, there was the only bit of the trailer which I got even remotely excited for was it's the whole thing was was the <laughs> the bizarre and completely hilarious Chris Hemsworth? He just oh, looks he's... insane. He does, and he's he does. he's going I... full on comedy in this, and I'm I'm here for it. The rest of it, I'm sorry, there could have been outtakes from Fury Road. Well, I'm plus, okay with that. I'm plus, okay. oh no doof warrior, no doof warrior. Three out of ten. Sorry, if if there if it was a five hour cut of fury road i'd still give it a 10 so Whoa. so if that outtakes no, from fury fine. road bring it on i, want I just different. can't believe it's <laughs> wait it's we've had to wait like a decade to get this i am disappointed it's not charlie's throne but i i'm on board with uh well, it, it's, it's it's decades before it couldn't be charlie's throne unless it they could the whole easily film have been charlie's throne if oh, they shit. shot it Back to back, or a couple of years <laughs> yeah. after Fury Miller hops his time machine. He just, yeah, what's he thinking about? Honestly, they just shouldn't have waited a decade. Um, I'm sure he didn't do it on purpose, Kaz. I mean, I mean, how much problem did he have trying to shoot Fury Road? Didn't he try to shoot that 19 times? I think he killed a lot of people yeah. making it. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> Mickey 17, based on the novel Mickey 7, because you know they wanted a few more to die before. Uh, Mickey Seventeen is um, looks interesting. I mean, uh, director of Parasite, director of Snowpiercer. Mm -hmm. You're yep. all over it, Mark. I am all over it. I know nothing about this other than the trailer, which frankly just has a staggeringly hot looking R Pats looking staggeringly hot, and that's it. But that's all I need: R Pats and Bong Joon Ho. Uh, <laughs> science fiction just take all of my money right now. I'm getting uh, a a bong variation of edge of tomorrow that's what mm -hmm. i'm getting as a vibe mm -hmm. from the pitch for this uh, in other words mm -hmm. serious but also darkly quirky at the same time mm -hmm. but obviously not done with that kind of wild repeating style i um, think what's interesting about this more than anything else is that it's from warner so this is a major you know Bong Joon Ho hadn't done anything for a major studio before, and now it's yeah. got the might of Warner Brothers behind it. So this could be something <laughs> really special. Yeah. That that's <laughs> they've gone bust of <laughs> 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 they, 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 They're just they're just dicking around with the share price, so Disney will buy them out. <laughs> Don't worry, it's fine. Um, that's at number three. Number two, we've got Horizon and American Saga. I'm loving the subtitles of this, which uh, I I'm looking forward to. Kevin Costner doing mm -hmm. a bunch of movie movies, uh, westerns, his favourite genre. Um, four I've shocked Mark with today. Four. I did only think it was two, but he's gone all James Cameron, hasn't he? He's He has. He's gone, I don't want to do Yellowstone anymore. I want to go and, um, and put a hat on, grow a moustache, and ride around <laughs> during the Civil War. And the Civil War was so long, I want to do before, during, towards the end and after. And I want to do it in four movies. And they gave him the budget to do two. So they've got two in the can. And it's crazy. They're doing a, a crazy release. One's like mid-June and one's like end August. No, oh, that's pretty mm. cool. So Horizon Part One and Two are coming in quick succession. I just, I just want to know that he'll do the last two, because that's a lot of investment in those first two. If if they don't have those last two wrapped up, mm. uh, if they it, do it, another Yellowstone not, on the as long as it ends and doesn't, you know, not mid sentence. Yeah, all right. yeah it's the cast see. in this that 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 gives you as much hope. I mean, that is an, an and it's not just flashy. No, you know, names for now, is it? You know, Will no. Patton, Danny Huston, Sienna Miller, Jenna Malone, you know, 
Yeah, Fahey, come on, have some of that. And Michael Rooker. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a good oh, cast of chewy oh. character actors. Yes, yes. Come on. I think, I think it's uh, I think it's a good pick. And now, I want them all to have as good facial hair as Kevin Costner, including <laughs> Jenna Malone and Sienna Miller. The, the trailer is hilarious. It's like Kevin Costner riding a horse, stopping, turning around, and shooting, shooting. his rifle. That's the whole trailer. Okay. That's all you need. Spoiler mate. alert. I mean, it's genius trailering. Yeah, that's but, what it um, used to be in the olden days, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> See the trailers, get you, to, get you excited in the film, not show you the whole film. Yes. Yes, they did. Uh, which comes brings us to our number one, which were, which is June part two. It would have been probably our number one choice for this year. Might have had oh. a, a little bit more competition. I don't know. But, but it got pushed. It's coming out in March. Uh, I think I've watched one of the early trailers. I haven't seen this trailer part two, but um, no I'm brainer, going. this isn't it? It really it is, is after. It, it's got to be. I mean, yeah, you know, it, I mean, and, I, I, yeah. and again, it's what he's done with by bringing in the likes of Florence Pugh and Christopher Walken as the as the emperor. I mean, oh, that's a bit delish, that isn't it? <laughs> oh, come on, it's gonna be, it's gonna be impressive yeah, stuff. And he he great. hasn't really put his foot wrong as a director. For me, it's I've, I've got time for everything. Mm. That is uh, that is our list. Mm. Wow, that was um, that was a lost. That was a lot. Uh, I, I mean, I think I think the interesting things for me, and certainly I don't know about you guys, but for the last couple of years, my films of the year are not the ones you could have spotted from a mile off like we're doing now we're only really looking at you know the big studio tent yes. poles the ones we know about for me over the course of the last few years it's the little gems that sneak out on streaming services or on vod yes. releases yes so uh, i am yeah. confident that alongside some of these and some of these will be excellent i think we will also get a host of those smaller films that we don't see coming that will be I, I absolutely you're, amazing. You're not going to notice past lives. You're not going to notice whatever the cursed. You're not going to notice a, a bunch mm. of things that that, that pop up. Um, yeah. This is just the higher profile ones, but it's a, it's mm. a, still an eclectic bunch that isn't dominated by isn't dominated by sequels and superhero movies, which is which is a nice nice change, nice change of speed. What what is the question we have on the chat? Have you got it, Sai? Uh, do you know when Oppenheimer comes on 4K disc? It's, 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 it's already it's out. out already. It's already out. It's out there already, peoples. We made someone happy out there. Uh, um, I, I, any I, information I feel... on the book Kill Bill 4K? I do uh, not have no. any information on the Kill Bill 4K whatsoever. I mean, we're, we're hoping that there is a, a Cameron-like splurge of uh, Tarantino films on 4K. Um, at some point, who who was it? I can't remember which of the studios untangled all the bloody Miramax rights. Was it? I want to say Paramount, but I'm not. I'm not too sure. Uh, but I know that it's taken so long to sift through the tangled rights because yeah. it wasn't just the Weinstein uh, fallout. They were they were a tangled set of rights anyway because they were part into certainly the Kill Bills. I think were part mm. internationally funded as well. So it was a it was a hugely complex web which I know they untangled earlier this year. But I think the reason why everyone got excited for Kill Bill 4K was was this an anniversary year? I I, yeah, I want to say people love anniversary years. Apart uh, from I want, Paramount, I, I want to yeah. say that they, they put nothing extra on their discs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, anniversary year. We can sell more shit. I want to say uh, that, that, that's annoying me now because I'm pretty sure Kill Bill. Yeah, Google was it a... in the show will be yeah, over by I, the time you find. I'm it absolutely there. googling it. Uh, there, yeah, there you go. This year was the 20th anniversary of Kill Bill Volume One, so I think no, we all kind of put two and two it. together and came up with four, but no one else did. So no, I uh, heard nothing more. Uh, obviously, whether or not we'll get anything next year. I don't know. I think, like Kaz has said, I think they'll let the dust die on Cameron, and suddenly we'll get a Tarantino box set. Yeah, maybe Hopefully. in time for whatever the the twentieth anniversary of Volume Two, <laughs> which is next year. <laughs> so you know, maybe. Uh, yeah, you know, it, it's interesting the way it goes. Though you get these films released, and there's always something a little bit wrong. I mean, we 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 had Black Hat recently covered. I recently covered that Michael Mann's Black Hat. 
and it just r reminded it's, it's something going on in the chat on that talking about all of the films that have made it to 4k which had superior director's cuts where the superior director's cuts aren't in 4k mm -hmm. it's like a really weird thing to do on a final format didn't we so. do that did we do a podcast on that once or did we discuss it and never got around to it Maybe we discussed it and never got around to it. Maybe next year. Saving it for 24, yeah. Si. Yeah, I tell you what, 24, okay. everything, everything is changing. A uh, whole new movies podcast format. So I think what they're going to do is we're going to do the podcast like this, but they're going to move our faces around the screen, <gasps> depending whether we're talking this way or this way. That's so amazing. We can, we can push technology. our faces. Yeah. It'd be really good. Sorry, I'm going this way now. So, oh, stop it, Cassie, freaking me out. Yeah, that's it's the way it's gonna go. <laughs> or, or we're gonna do one like a bit like on the Enterprise, where we all tilt to one way and all tilt to the other way. Yeah. <laughs> choreographed, choreographed oh. video podcast, yeah. 2024. <laughs> Here we come. Um, oh, can't wait. That, I think that's that's it. That's it. Bang on time. Bang on do, time. Do let it's us know if posh. there's. Anything we've not covered, well, we haven't covered anything other than 2024, but if there's anything we haven't reviewed in this non-review podcast that you think we should check out, we're not going to check it out because the year is over for, for podcast reviews and next year is going to be completely different. So, But do let us know. We'll just ignore it. Uh, that's it for the AV Forms podcast this week. My thanks to the movie team, which uh, includes Simon today. Uh, didn't I say Merry Christmas? I'll say it again, Merry Christmas. Don't say Merry Christmas. We're going to see him again. In the... anyway, okay, Merry Christmas. Oh, yeah, we are. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so. Take it back. Take back. Take the back. No, no. So Sodgy Christmas. <laughs> and Mark. Yeah, and stick your new year as well while you're <laughs> at it. That was harsh. Don't go there. <laughs> the whole, that's bad. Anyway, if you enjoyed this podcast, please give us a like, subscribe to the channel, plus hit the notification bell so you don't miss out when we publish our live streams, product reviews, and more. If you really liked our podcast, then buy us a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash avforums. I need a coffee. You can follow us on Twitter and Facebook and bookmark avforums.com for the latest reviews, news, and videos. Plus, why not leave us a five-star rating on whichever service you use, if they allow it, but only if you enjoyed the show, which you must have done. I'm just yeah. Absolutely. Thank you for watching and listening, and join us for the end-of-year Big Bash Christmas podcast shortly. Ho, 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 ho. <laughs>